It is Monday, November 7th, 1.07 a.m. I'm going to read the 9th degree paper, Emblems and Mode of Use, by Baphomet, 11th degree, Alistair Crowley. Read Magic, Chapter 12. The initiated interpretation in footnote 4 on that page is nonsense, dust in the eyes of the profane. See also Libra Starte, or 175, pages 390 through 404, for hints as to how to acquire the mental state necessary to prepare for the work. Also, for the same reason, Liber Capricorni Pneumaticae, or Liber Osh, 370, pages 432 through 434, and Liber Cheth Valvalum Abiegni, or Liber 156, pages 430 through 431. But it all adds up to inflame thyself in praying. Emblem 1, the egg. This is said to be laid by the white eagle, whose number is, in this case I suppose, 156. Its vehicle or menstruum is what the alchemists call the gluten. It may be fertilized by any kind of serpent, which is congenial, and the nature of the eaglet will depend upon the will of the serpent. The hatching and subsequent career will depend on the original energy, the right ordering of the surrounding circumstances, and so on. But you get nothing at all, or something you don't want at all, because the egg, ill cared for, can collect a poisonous serpent from hostile and malignant elements, unless you are extremely careful to get the magical link properly formed and guarded. See Magic, Chapter 14, pages 106 through 122. Emblem 2, the Serpent. This is the principle of immortality, the self-renewal through incarnation, of persistent will, inherent in the Red Lion who is, of course, the operator. It is said to swim in the blood of the Red Lion. The Lion must determine what kind of serpent he needs as a vehicle of the particular will demanded by the proposed operation. It must, of course, be a necessary element of his total, true will, and otherwise, there would be an eternal conflict between the part and the whole. The operation would be a failure, or worse. E.g., if you did an operation to harm Smith, it would fail and reflect on yourself, because deeper than any personal antagonism, you are sworn brothers in the OTO. The properly trained and vitalized serpent is found in the acts of concentration upon the object of the operation, preliminary to starting. That is, to impose the image of your particular will upon the actually existing physical serpents which you possess, eager to reproduce and manifest the image of your will. Their natural will is, of course, to continue their lion through the floods, i.e., the fertilization of a suitable egg will appear as the original lion modified by that particular eagle, or as an eagle similarly constituted. But the technique of the operation prevents, or should prevent, this issue. So, as the will to create and transmit cannot be balked, the law of conservation of energy, the material basis of the operation, are prepared to produce the image of the will impressed upon them by the preliminary studies and practices by bringing to pass the object of the operation. Conditions of the operation Both lion and eagle must be robust, in good health, as a rule, but a sick lion can often heal himself overflowing with energy, magnetically attracted to one another, and an absolute understanding harmony about the object of the operation. Note, it is possible and often unfortunately often necessary to employ an eagle altogether ignorant of the theory, or even what is being done. I have found this works perfectly. Indeed, when the eagle is aware, a thousand difficulties crop up. It is horrifyingly rare to find an eagle genuinely capable of initiated cooperation. The late OHO told me he had found perfection twice in his whole life. Even so, the result was bad, causing a violent reaction of antipathy. I have been more fortunate. There should be no worries of distractions. The current of thought should flow freely and forcibly towards attainment of the object, and then inflame thyself in praying. The Operation Proper as the actual work proceeds, the mind will must be directed more and more intensely towards the object of the operation. Physical phenomena, obviously with constantly increasing insistence, will do their utmost to attract the attention of the operators themselves. It is of the absolute necessity for the success of the work that at the last moment, which may be prolonged to several minutes, when the intensity of the conflict between physical stress produces 
as it should, of course, when there is no question of conscious achievement, a complete blackout. When the ego consciousness itself is abolished, the will should still continue to create, stopping only when the blood of the red lion is won with the gluten of the white eagle, and the serpent and the egg have fused completely. The result of this fusion is called the elixir, in numerous other names, e.g. the stone of the philosophers, the medicine of metals, etc., especially the quintessence. Perfect simultaneity between the lion and the eagle is important. To assist this very difficult work, the use of a mantra, either universal like Akha Dua or Om Mani Padme Hum, or suited to the object of the working, is often valuable. E.g., in the Paris working, the verses were composed specifically in invoking Mercury. Unitaire in Vati Vates, Rex in Plite Hermes to Venus, Verba Nefanda Ferens. In English, Behold, the priest is joined to the priest, illustrious king of the staff, Juan Caduceus. Mayest thou come, Hermes, bearing unutterable words. Perhaps forbidden is a better translation. There is one point further. The lion must be enraged before he can cope with the eagle, and during this process it is quite impossible to think of the ceremony. To do so would stop the whole process, whose beginning may be announced by the prayer, Accidenda in nobis, dominus ignum sui amoris et flamma materne caritatis. In English, may the Lord kindle us in the fire of his love and the flame of eternal charity. This last word here has a special technical meaning. See Magic, pages 325 through 326. This is the signal to forget altogether the purpose of the whole operation, but immediately that all things are ready, the apparatus in the proper position, the mantra in the contest between the creative will and the physical phenomena should begin. Success depends largely on the smartness and completeness of this control. The Elixir This being thus duly prepared, it must be administered as follows. The lion must collect it, the best method is by suction so as to avoid waste, and share it with the eagle. It should be absorbed by the mucous membrane. A portion is reserved and placed in physical contact with the magical link, or with a talisman specially prepared for the operation, and consecrated accordingly. At the very least, some suitable symbol, e.g. if you are making an opus for money, smear the elixir on a gold coin or ring, if for health, touch the bare earth or the patient with it. In any case, be careful to consume it by absorption, for it restores with interest any virtue that may have been expended in the work itself. The effect of any opus ought to be refreshing, if not, error somewhere. Read Judges, Samson's Riddle, What is sweeter than honey and stronger than a lion? Here bees, identical symbolically with the eagle, swarm in the carcass of the lion slain by Samson. But this lion is our serpent, and Samson our red lion. A strange and potent sweetness characterizes the elixir when properly prepared. See also Liber 333, Chapter 36, Magic, page 328, St. John's Gospel, Chapter 4, verses 13-16, through 16, and 31-32, through 32, Chapter 6, verse 27, and 48-58, through 58, and Chapter 7, verse 38. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 through 4, 16 through 17, and chapter 11, 23 through 30. Also, Little Essays Toward Truth, pages 70 through 74. This last is important. This mode of work must never be used except as a sacrament. If you do, all kinds of horrid things can get a hold of you through the undetermined, unguarded, wasted menstruum. You must prepare the quintessence on every occasion. This is the great danger. Hence the universal insistence of all magi upon the virtue which gives its title to this little essay above mentioned. That should be enough. Some of it sounds hard, but work on it constantly, and there is no limit to your possible success.